Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky urged its allies to stop, watching, and take steps before North Koreans' troops deployed in Russia reached the battlefield. Zelensky raised the prospect of a preemptive Ukrainian strike on camps where the North Korean troops are being trained, and said Kiev knows their location. But he said Ukraine can't do it without permission from allies to use Western-made long-range weapons to hit targets deep inside Russia. But instead, America is watching, Britain is watching, Germany is watching. Everyone is just waiting for the North Korean military to start attacking Ukrainians as well, Zelensky said in a post late Friday on the Telegram messaging app. The Biden administration said Thursday that some 8,000 North Korean soldiers are now in Russia's Kursk region near Ukraine's border and are preparing to help the Kremlin fight against Ukrainian troops in the coming days. On Saturday, Ukraine's military intelligence said that more than 7,000 North Koreans equipped with Russian gear and weapons had been transported to areas near Ukraine. The agency, known by its acronym GUR, said that North Korean troops were being trained at five locations in Russia's Far East. It did not specify its source of information. Western leaders have described the North Korean troop deployment as a significant escalation that could also jolt relations in the Indo-Pacific region, and open the door to technology transfers from Moscow to Pyongyang that could advance the threat posed by North Korea's nuclear weapons and missile program. North Korean Foreign Minister Cho Sun Hui met with her Russian counterpart in Moscow in Friday. Ukrainian leaders have repeatedly said they need permission to use Western weapons to strike arms depots, airfields and military bases far from the border to motivate Russia to seek peace. In response, U.S. defense officials have argued that the missiles are limited in number, and that Ukraine is already using its own long-range drones to hit targets farther into Russia. Moscow has also consistently signaled that it would view any such strikes as a major escalation. President Vladimir Putin warned on September 12 that Russia would be at war with the U.S. and NATO states if they approve them. Russia's top diplomat on Friday hosted his North Korean counterpart for talks amid reports that Pyongyang has sent thousands of troops to Russia to support its military in the war in Ukraine. Foreign Minister Cho Sun Hui's visit to Moscow and her meeting with Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov came on the heels of the Pentagon statement that North Korea has deployed about 10,000 troops to Russia to fight against Ukraine within the next several weeks. Western leaders have described the North Korean troop deployment as a significant escalation that could also jolt relations in the Indo-Pacific region. Neither Moscow nor Pyongyang have specified the agenda for Ko's talks in Moscow, but in a closed-door hearing at South Korea's parliament, the South's spy agency said Cho may be involved in high-level discussions on sending additional troops to Russia and negotiating what the North would get in return. South Korean and Western officials have voiced concern that Russia may offer technology that could advance the threat posed by North Korea's nuclear weapons and missile program. Meeting Cho in Moscow on Friday, Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov hailed ties between Moscow and Pyongyang, saying that they have reached an unprecedented high level over the past few years, and proposed discussing the implementation of the strategic partnership agreement the two nations signed earlier this year. Cho said North Korean and Russia would have discussions on a series of issues regarding politics and foreign policy as well as matters that require a joint response. She reiterated Pyongyang's support for the just fight of Russia's military and people to defend their country's sovereign rights and security interests in Ukraine. Moscow and Pyongyang have responded vaguely to South Korean and Western claims of the North Korean troop deployment to Russia, emphasizing that their military cooperation conforms with international law, without directly admitting the presence of the North's forces in Russia. The United States and its allies also have accused North Korea of providing millions of artillery shells and other equipment to Russia to fuel its military action in Ukraine. Russia, along with China, has blocked US-led efforts at the Security Council to tighten sanctions on North Korea over its recent missile testing, which intensified after Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Russia also vetoed a UN resolution to extend the mandate of monitors in March, 
in a move that effectively abolished oversight by UN experts of Security Council sanctions against North Korea. South Korean President Yoon Suk Yeol last month raised the possibility of supplying Ukraine with weapons while saying Seoul is preparing countermeasures that could be rolled out in stages depending on the degree of military cooperation between Pyongyang and Moscow. Uriro 군육이 눈치도 보지 않고 나라의 주권적 권리와 안전 유익을 소화하기 위한 러시아 군대와 이민이 정의 성전을 일관하게 강력히 지지 성원하도록 지시하셨습니다. 경연은 김정은 국무위원장 동지께서는 잊지도 않은 군육의 위협을 억제한다는 망령에 사로잡혀 한미 동맹을 핵에 기반한 동맹으로 변이시키고 무력 증강의 열을 올리면서. 광적으로 벌려놓는 미국과 한국의 전쟁 사동과 도발적 행태는 언제든 조선반도에서 힘이 균형이 깨질 수 있다는 위험성을 내포하고 있다고 말씀하셨습니다. <목소리>